State of Affairs is pleased to welcome former Governor Jim McGreevy, who is the chairman of the New Jersey Ranchy Corporation, and uh, Edwin Ortiz, former client of the New Jersey Ranchy Corporation. Good to see you, gentlemen. Thank you for having us. Jim, we've talked uh, many times about the issues of um, those who have been incarcerated or are coming back into society. Yep. We'll tell your story in a second. Describe the organization, and then we'll bring this guy sure. in. Sure. The New Jersey Reentry Corporation um, is dedicated to helping returning persons, core involved persons, rebuild their lives. They're coming back after what they call football time in, in prison and jail. I mean, literally 10, 15, 20 years. And Stephen, I think what we do, and God willing, we do well, is we link people to addiction treatment, which is so critically important. 70% of the people behind bars are active in their addiction. In addition, we link them to health care through a federally qualified health center or a hospital. Then employment and training. I mean, we work with one stops. We work with corporations. I'd like to shout out to Kevin Cummings of Investors Bank. We work closely with the business community, which is important. And then legal services. So many of these guys have outstanding warrants. They come home after 10, 15, 20 years, and there's a whole slew of warrants. And so we try to clean up those warrants so they can go on. And lastly is also mentoring and spiritual care so that they understand, most importantly, they can't think and act with the same way they did that brought them to prison in the first place. So it's transformative. Edwin, in 1986, your life changed. Yes, it did. How so? Um, in 1986, uh, I was suffering from addiction. Um, in order to support my addiction, I was committing crimes, specifically on robberies. Unfortunately, someone lost their life. As a result, I went to prison, and I spent the last 30 years in prison. 30 years in prison? Yes. I was released September 22nd of 2016. You spent 30 years in prison. You actually told us before that I asked when did you guys connect and start working together. Yeah. You thought it was at a certain time. When did you know Jim McGreevy? Well, I met Jim the second day he was elected. <laughs> he didn't know that. No, he no, did I not. Didn't I know never that told him. Until just now. I was in the chapel at Broadway State Prison. And Jim came into the chapel the next day. He, he as came, governor. As governor. He was the elect governor. This is before he started this work. Right. So when I, when I watched it on NJTV that he was uh, starting a reentry corporation program, it was no surprise to me. You sensed it then. So let me ask you 30 years, you come out, what are you facing? Challenges, difficult challenges. Uh, for example, literacy as far as computers. Um, before I went to prison, you know, the telephone was a Motorola phone, the big battery ones, and then you had the one that folded up. You didn't have access to um, internet and different technologies that exist today. So that's one of my biggest challenges is computer literacy. So that's just one. Today, I mean, I don't want to give a short shift version to this. You are working. You are making a difference. Describe your life today. Well, today I am, I have two jobs thanks to the uh, Re Ranchy Corporation. Corporation. Um, I'm a taxpayer, you know, which feels good. I'm not, you know, no longer a threat to society. Um, I've transformed my life. I speak to the youth when I have an opportunity to speak to the youth. And um, I also work with the Reentry Corporation at the job where I'm at. Mm. Um, I mentor other prisoners that come through the program. Jim, what are you thinking right now? I, I, I'm just so ha happy. And, and Edwin's about to go into the bricklayers, the union. And this has changed his life. And I think, Stephen, what we try to get across to the public, I remember when I was in seminary in New York and I was trying to get somebody an identification, a birth certificate, and it was almost Someone impossible. who had come out. Yeah, someone who had come, thank you, someone who had come out of prison, and they, all they had was their Department of Corrections identification. And it was virtually worthless. And so that if you want general assistance, if you want employment, if you want housing, you need an identification. It's something that so many of us take for granted. And it was almost unfathomable. I mean, I remember going to Social Security. I remember going to New York and, and just like this poor fellow wanted to do the right thing. And here Edwin is at the Reentry Corporation. I want to thank, you know, Governor Christie, the Senate President Sweeney, uh, Speaker Prieto. What we're able to do is to help them with their identification, get them linked mm -hmm. to health care. So whether they have di diabetes or HIV or whatever it is that they have their medi medication, link them to employment and services. Brother, you mentioned the state. Uh, why is the state relevant in this? Because the state funds most of our program. In addition, we get monies from the federal government and, and from private nonprofits. funding as well. Yes. And by the way, we're involved in a public service awareness initiative with Jim's organization. So when you see PSA spots, that's what you're talking about. By the way, why do you want public to even know about this? Because we have to shift the opinion. Because people see people like Ed and they say, all right, why are we spending this yeah, kind of money? Yeah, why are we doing that? 
Because when you look to, I mean, candidly, that 1% of the population that's committing a disproportionate number of crimes, if Edwin comes out and I can make his life whole, if I can give him a pathway to employment, if I can reconnect him to his family, if I can keep him sober, he doesn't want to go back to prison. Mm -hmm. 30 years in a cage? He wants this. But, it's, Stephen, it's so difficult. I did it myself once. I came out and I tried to get welfare and I sat in the lines and went to the one stop. And they're good people on both yeah. sides, but it's difficult. And so we're one stop shopping. My job every day is to make him a success. So let me ask you, as people watch you and listen to uh, Jim right now, who are saying, you know what? We, it's not really for the rest of us to care about this because you did it, you, but you did your time. Right. Why should everyone else watching right now on all the different platforms are on, why should they care about your story and others like you? Why are they invested in this? Right, like you said, you, you said a key word, invested. This is an investment because a lot of men and women that are coming home from prison came from dark places. And, um, you grew up right here in Newark, in Columbus Homes. Yes, in one of the worst projects in one the city of, the worst. of Newark. And um, I went from a dark place to a darker place. But unfortunately, I didn't allow myself to be consumed, and I found myself, and I transformed my life in prison, in that dark place. But people should care because it's a public safety issue. If you don't invest in men coming home from prison and giving them an opportunity to find employment, to go to school, um, to receive the counseling that they need, to restore the driver's license, because as Jim alluded to, um, I had fines that I have to pay. And Do I was, you have it now? No. I'm paying through, through the conservative, no. through the reentry program, I was able to make a payment plan and restore my license. Because you, you, you get your license only when you make those payments. Right. Once you start making a payment, <clears throat> you're eligible to take the uh, permit. And without that car and without that ability to transport yourself, working becomes very right. challenging. Right. Absolutely. Yes. A lot of jobs it's require. Catch 22. You, yes. A lot of jobs require you to have a license, a valid license. And it's important for the Taxpayers of New Jersey should understand that their money are being mm -hmm. spent wisely because you're either going to spend 5000 in helping these men react me back into society. Or how much per year in oh. prison? What do you think, Jim? 50K. No! 50K. $50,000 a year? Yes. To, to keep somebody locked up in per inmate. And so that's what we're saying. Our cost is $2,200 per person. $2,200 per person. And the reality is nationwide, the average is about 66, 68% of people who recidivate go back to prison within three to five years. Yes. Yeah. And our benchmark is 19.7. That means four out of five people do what Edwin does. They reconnect with their family. They're living mm -hmm. sober lives. They're working. They're contributing to the community. So if you do it, like, I appreciate what Edwin said about investment, but I would argue that this is a spiritual, a moral obligation, that these are people who grew up in dark places, they didn't grow up in families the way you and I did, and now, by virtue of Edwin's own determination, mm -hmm. the services we provide, he's turned his life around 180 degrees. Finally, I want to ask you this, not to be self-serving. You watched public broadcasting when you were in. Yes, I did. It was important to you. Yes, it was. Um, you know, it's important to stay politically aware of what's going on. And um, one of the things that I always watched during the elections was your, your TV show. Oh, say, no, don't talk about me. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. So, wait, wait. I stop, stop, How Jim, much don't... older is Steve Adubato in person now than when you watched him oh, 30 he, years he ago? Looks, he looks a lot younger. Oh, Lord. <laughs> McGreevy, you had to go there? Mm -hmm. Look at you. You, you, you haven't changed. Hey, you haven't hey, changed hey. one bit. Life is well, Jim McGreevy, former governor. You were going to say, I'm sorry. Yeah, I cut uh, you off. Uh, um, no, I just wanted to say that, you know, it's not just about, you know, employment, finding a job right. and things of like that. It's the Rich Corporation is a family to me. Mm. So, I, I, fortunately, I have a family. I have that support network, but I also have a second family in the Reentry Corporation. Edwin, we are rooting for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thanks, Thanks so much, Stephen. You have not changed. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> Still got that crazy sense of humor. Jim McGreevy, former governor, but now chairman of the New Jersey Reentry Corporation, maybe the most important work he's done in his life, and also Edwin Ortiz, uh, who is a former client at the uh, corporation. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks. Stay Steve. right there. We'll be right back right after this. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Agnes Veris NJTV studio at 2 Gateway. Funding has been provided by TD Bank, the New Jersey Education Association, the New Jersey Office of the Insurance Fraud Prosecutor, RWJ Barnabas Health, JAG Physical Therapy, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, and
and by Choose New Jersey. Promotional support provided by Observer New Jersey Politics. And by Jaffe Communications, where business, media, and government converge in New Jersey.